Whenever one begins uh, the study of a new topic, it's always quite nice to get some sense uh, of the historical context of that particular idea or of that concept. And that can happen in a multiplicity of ways. One way is to look at that concept or idea through the lens of the person who made that, uh, who made uh, significant contributions to that particular idea. What were they thinking of? What were they trying to solve? What were they aiming to do? Uh, how did they actually go about making contributions that they actually did? The second is through the lens of the idea itself. Look at it from an evolutionary standpoint and see how the idea has developed over years or decades or centuries. The third is to say, let's not worry about the idea per se, but let's sort of look at the time period around which that idea was germinated. What else was happening in the world around them? What were the other interesting movements? Uh, these could be political movements, these could be economic shifts, these could be changes in society. What else was happening in the world around us roughly at the time that this particular idea was being germinated? So the person in question is a very famous polymath who worked across mathematics, astronomy and a whole bunch of different areas as is the case with a lot of these polymaths. And he did his work in the first half of the ninth century. And the gentleman is Al-Khawarizmi. His book, Al-Jabar, actually laid the foundations for modern algebra by presenting the first systematic solutions to linear and quadratic equations. And frankly, if you actually do something as fundamental as that, you're bound to be known as the father or as the founder of algebra. And in around 820, he was appointed as the astronomer at the head of the library in a rather fascinating uh, institution known as the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. The other extremely influential work of his was on arithmetic. His text entitled Kitab al-Hisab al-Hindi essentially translates into the book of Indian computation. It's rather interesting that it's got the word computation in there in the title of the text. And in essence, what uh, this book does is that it provides a whole range of very efficient and correct procedures for computations on numbers. While his work was essentially done in the uh, sort of first half of the 9th century, it was only roughly around the 12th century where his work reached Europe through translations and then his work was widely acknowledged and was very influential in Europe at that point of time. His Latinized name, Algorithmus, is actually the name of the method used for computations and we know it today more popularly as algorithm. There was also a stamp issued in 1983 in the Soviet Union to commemorate the birthday of the great person but of course, this was many, many centuries after he was actually born. If we take a step back from algebra, arithmetic, and from the great man himself, but see that you know, his work was essentially done in the early half of the ninth century. So if we stick to the ninth century and ask the question, what other interesting events were happening in the ninth century, or what else of interest perhaps happened in the ninth century. Now, of course, there's lots of things that happened in the ninth century. I mean, it is an entire century, but it's worth sort of thinking about, you know, a couple of events or a couple of activities that might have happened in that century. In 859, we saw the construction of a mosque in Morocco, which served as an important spiritual and learning center. And finally, in 1963, got incorporated into Morocco's university system which is now the University of al Kharawin. The latter half of the 9th century saw the reign of King Alfred the Great. He finally died in 899. And in late 9th century, we also see the end of the Pallava dynasty in southern India.